And so it just made sense for me to go on a mission and it just made sense to follow those cultural norms and go forward with faith. And so when I found out that I didn't really believe anything, I also realized I never really believed anything in the past either. When I was 19, I had decided to serve a mission for my church. Uh, the typical length of a mission is about two years, and mine lasted a total of six months. I, I didn't believe anything. I didn't really have faith in anything that I was preaching. I was already in Argentina where I was serving my mission. I was trying to use the Spanish language, which I didn't know, to teach people about this gospel that I now didn't believe in. And I couldn't feel good about preaching something that I had no faith in. It really felt like God didn't care about me individually. Not for one single second. Other missionaries received revelation and were able to understand what they were supposed to say at any given moment. And I was sitting here waiting for some big thing to just show me who I was and why I mattered. Yet God said nothing. He wouldn't say hello. I contacted my mission president and I said, hey, I'm going home. No more, all right? I didn't ask for help. I didn't say I'm struggling. I just said, I'm done. I'm going home. I remember strategically placing my Spanish Sudoku book over my, uh, my left chest where my name badge was. I didn't want anybody to see the name of Jesus Christ on my chest because I couldn't talk about it. I went home and I was, I was still determined that I was gonna try to find the gospel and find my faith. Because again, I knew that it was a good thing. I knew that the principles, everything taught, the basis and foundation of the gospel and God's teachings are good. They create incredible people, not just incredible church members, not just incredible church leaders, incredible people. Because I knew that I wasn't the first person to have these thoughts. I didn't believe that I was some new, new aged free thinker. <laughs> there had to be something there. But there was one day where me and my family went to a family friend's house. It was actually my, my best friend's house. And his father was the bishop of my ward growing up. I walked into the home fully expecting something to happen, them just to make it awkward. <laughs> but he looked at me and he grabbed me. He said, I'm so glad to have you here. There was no spiritual interrogation. There was no pretending that nothing had happened. And there was just unadulterated love. And that's it. That's the grace of God. I decided I was gonna continue to try to find things. I was at this point where I could take that single step and give up, or I could take those several thousand steps away from that precipice and continue trying. And so I decided I was gonna continue trying. That desire to find God and to know God is what allowed me to go forward and try. And I needed to stick to that. And it took a long while. And frankly, it was very frustrating and it was far too gradual for me. But I eventually found a few things. Through lots of prayer and lots of study, I was able to grab a piece of faith. And I found my faith in prayer. That's all I had at this moment. That's the only thing that I had. I believed in prayer and I believed in God hearing and answering my prayers. And it felt so powerful to have one thing. I didn't really believe in much else, but now I believed in God and I believed in prayer. And because I had that, I felt so overwhelmed and I needed to, I needed to continue finding those pieces. And as I started recognizing those small things, I started gathering those pieces and putting them together. And those small things really were just small things. Somebody says hi to me when I was really, really wanting somebody to say hi to me. I, I would meet a new friend that would understand a lot of my depression. Uh, and that happened and she was so helpful. Um, at one point, somebody sent me a text at the perfect moment exactly what I needed. And just these random things that seem like nothing, they can easily, easily seem like nothing and be passed off as nothing. But there's something there. I think it was hard for me to find those pieces of faith because I was so focused on receiving some big answer. 
I put preconditions on what God was giving me. And so there was a bunch of toddler miracles, if you will, that were just right here, unable to be let in because I was so focused on receiving something so big. And once I got over that, and once I realized that I can't put preconditions on God, then I was able to start gathering those pieces because God doesn't put preconditions on me. To be fully candid, I still have many things that I don't have. I, I still have many pieces that I need to find. And to be honest, I still deal a lot with depression and I don't think that will ever go away. I think that's gonna be a lifelong thing. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I have the pieces that I have and I'm so glad to have those. And I know that God wants me to be there, that He looks at me and He says, I'm so glad to have you here. And I can turn to God and I can say, I'm so glad to be here. What more could I possibly want? Thank you.